Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so um, uh, so let's continue with our study of Mobius transformations. Okay, uh, so last time uh, I explained to you the uh, classification of Mobius transformations into uh, uh, you know parabolic, elliptic, hyperbolic, and loxodromic uh, Mobius transformations. So just to recall that, you see, uh, uh, we started with uh, a Mobius transformation uh, so you take the uh, set of all Mobius transformations that is a group under composition okay and that is identified with the uh, holomorphic automorphisms of the Riemann sphere which is C union infinity which is the same as C union infinity via the uh, uh, stereographic projection and well these uh, the holomorphic automorphisms is uh, is written uh, uh, there is a matrix rep matrix representation which is given by the PSL to C okay. So uh, this uh, so this is uh, determinant 1 matrices with complex entries 2 by 2 matrices. Uh, go uh, and you will have to go modulo uh, the subgroup given by plus or minus the identity matrix okay. So uh, and uh, you know the uh, the way we do this identification is on this side if you have Mobius transformation z is it z going to a z plus b by c z plus d see this is identified with this the matrix a b c d and we usually put the condition that a d minus b c is 1 so that this matrix is already an element of s l 2 all right and therefore this represents this uh, Mobius transformation and of course the other element that will represent this Mobius transformation is uh, putting a minus sign to each of these entries and you see if I put a minus sign to each of these entries this transformation still is the same okay. So uh, what we did last time was we uh, classified uh, 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 Mobius transformations based on uh, trace squared. So you know the value of trace squared of A which is uh, 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 so if I call this Mobius transformation as A or if I call uh, the representative matrix as A okay the only ambiguity is that I could have had minus sign but that is the reason I am taking trace squared A and this is A plus D the whole squared okay and uh, well the classification went as follows you look at values of uh, uh, trace squared A uh, okay which are which can in general be complex values and what we said was well um, you see if trace squared is uh, a real number okay and it lies between 0 and 4 so uh, okay 4 then uh, that is if it is light if it lies in this region okay we said that it is elliptic okay and if trace square is exactly equal to 4 we said that it is uh, parabolic we found we saw that it is parabolic. Uh, which is uh, corresponding to the condition that it has only one fixed point in C union infinity all right uh, and of course in which case uh, uh, if it is if it is parabolic it is uh, it has to be conjugate to a translation okay and uh, then if trace squared is real and greater than 4 okay 
we called uh, it as hyperbolic uh, here okay and for uh, trace squared values uh, outside of uh, this segment 0 comma 4 we call it we call the mobius transformation as loxodromic okay so this was our classification i mean this was at least uh, uh, this was uh, a, a classification based on trace squared this was the definition all right and then we found that uh, if you take uh, so uh, barring the mobius transformations which are uh, <coughs> translations okay or which are conjugate to translations which are parabolic the other ones namely elliptic hyperbolic loxodromic uh, so hyperbolic is a special case of loxodromic also because everything outside this uh, outside this uh, line segment 0 to 4 is supposed to be loxodromic okay so uh, we found that uh, uh, if you take a non parabolic uh, mobius transformation which means that it has two fixed points okay parabolic corresponds to the case when it has one fixed point then uh, you can further uh, make a conjugation and bring it to a special form so what was that special form so let me write that down if uh, so let me write this here if a is parabolic then uh, and only then is a uh, conjugate to a translation okay uh, if a is not parabolic uh, we can find b so that you see b a b inverse okay b is another mobius transformation and you have this transformation b b so you f this means first apply b inverse then apply a then apply b this is composition of functions if you think of it as functions here on the other hand if you also think of it as matrices it will be just conjugation of the matrix a by b okay so this is a this this identification here under this identification the composition of mappings will correspond to multiplication of uh, matrices here all right so uh, so we can find a b so that this uh, is of the is of this form is it going to lambda z and then you get various values of lambda which will tell you when it is parabolic elliptic hyperbolic uh, i mean when it is elliptic hyperbolic loxotomic of course not parabolic okay of course lambda is uh, not 0 or 1 okay because if lambda is 0 then you, uh, it is a z going to 0 that is not at all a mobius transformation and za and uh, lambda equal to 1 um, corresponds to the identity transformation which we are we are, we are not considering that at all we are we are trying to only classify non trivial transformations right so um, now uh, what are the values of lambda so if i draw draw a diagram like this so this is values of lambda uh, uh, so uh, in c so here also its values of trace squared in c so what happens is well um, you know uh, uh, the value 0 and the value 1 are forbidden okay the value 0 and 1 are forbidden um, then you have this unit circle okay which is given by mod lambda equal to 1 okay and this is the condition uh, for lambda so that uh, the original a you started out with uh, was uh, elliptic okay so this circle gives you the, uh, the these are the elliptic ones okay and of course one is not included mind you okay these are the elliptic ones then uh, you have uh, and if mod lambda is uh, real i mean if lambda that is if uh, lambda is real positive okay uh, if lambda is real positive and of course lambda is not equal to 1 then you get hyperbolic okay and so the real line the whole of the positive real line uh, excepting 0 and 1 uh, that corresponds to the case when uh, uh, lambda is real positive and lambda not equal to 1 that corresponds to the case when a is uh, hyperbolic okay mod lambda equal to 1 is the case when a is elliptic all right and all the rest of it is loxodromic 
uh, is a loxodromic non hyperbolic case okay so in general i'll just write it here as loxodromic <coughs> mod lambda is not equal to 1 so uh, hyperbolic is lambda is real lambda positive of course lambda is not equal to 1 okay so this is the uh, this is the picture uh, that is based on values of lambda and what is that lambda lambda is uh, this uh, special form is it going to lambda it, it belongs to the special form is it going to lambda z which you get after conjugating a by a suitable mobius transformation b after all if you uh, <laughs> remember b was chosen in such a way that uh, uh, b a b inverse has fixed point 0 and infinity okay and that is why b a b inverse had to be of the form z going to lambda z right okay so this is to recall what we did last time now uh, uh, i am going to now look at uh, so as you know we have we have studied uh, riemann surfaces with uni universal covering riemann sphere and we know that in that case it's just the, re the, the riemann surface has to be isomorphic to the riemann sphere with fundamental group trivial okay and then we have looked at the case when the riemann surface is having uh, the its universal cover as uh, the complex plane okay and in that case of course we have seen that uh, it's either the complex it's biholomorphic to either the complex plane or it is the complex structure on a cylinder which is uh, the same as the complex structure on c star and uh, the third case is uh, when it is a complex torus okay the only case that we have not seen so far is when the uh, universal covering is the upper half plane okay so i'm going to look at uh, next uh, what is uh, what are the uh, mobius transformations that uh, uh, leave the upper half plane invariant okay that is automorphisms of the upper half plane so so u so u is upper half plane uh, which is by definition um, the set of all z in c such that real part of z is positive this is upper half plane and uh, uh, well uh, i so I, so here is a so here is a lemma um, uh, suppose uh, a Mobius transformation A uh, is also an automorphism of U of U. Okay, so I'm looking at Mobius transformations which uh, map the upper half plane isomorphically onto itself. All right, then there are uh, uh, special you get more special conclusions so the first thing is uh, if a is uh, 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 if a is loxodromic then it has to be hyperbolic okay so if a is loxodromic then a is hyperbolic okay so please remember hyperbolic was the case uh, was a special case of loxodromic okay all right the condition for loxodromic was that the trace squared is not in uh, this uh, it's not a real number lying between 0 and uh, 4 all right so uh, what it, what that lemma the first statement says is that uh, the upper half plane does not have any uh, non hyperbolic loxodromic elements Okay. every loxodromic element also has to be hyperbolic so you can also say this uh, you can also state this as you know loxodromic is the same as hyperbolic as far as uh, mobius transformations that preserve the upper half plane okay that is the second first one then the second thing is uh, uh, a is elliptic uh, if and only if a fixes a point of u So, uh, the ellipticity condition on a Mobius transformation that preserves the upper half plane is equivalent to the transformation fixing a point of the upper half plane all right. Then the third one uh, A is of finite order uh, this implies that uh, A is uh, this is true if and only if uh, 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 so, uh, A is elliptic 
of finite order. Okay, so uh, in in other in other words, uh, uh, if you have an automorphism of U, uh, if it is finite order, it has to be elliptic. Okay, so let's try to prove these things. The proofs are all quite uh, uh, easily doable. Okay, so uh, the first one. So you see, I can uh, I can now use this uh, this criterion. Okay, and uh, I can find B so that B A B Z B A B inverse of Z is lambda Z. Okay, so uh, find B so that B A B inverse is lambda Z. B B A B inverse of Z. of z is equal to lambda times n, uh, lambda uh, lambda not equal to 0 or 1 I can do that alright by what I have stated here alright. Now uh, see the the condition that uh, uh, so, so you see first of all uh, A is uh, an automorphism of u. It is a holomorphic automorphism of upper half plane, okay. And mind you, this is this is uh, the subgroup PSL2R, okay. See, the uh, a general Mobius transformation is an element of PSL2C, alright. So, you will have a matrix with entries A, B, C, D like this, okay, and the entries are complex numbers. But then, you see, if it is going to preserve the upper half plane then these entries have to be real numbers alright and the, that the, re, the reason for that is because uh, if it preserves the upper half plane then it also has to preserve the boundary of the upper half plane which is the real which is the real axis okay. So, it has to take the real axis onto itself and that will force all the entries to be uh, real alright. So, uh, so it is all these entries are real alright and now you see uh, uh, what is what is the condition that uh, uh, A is loxotromic? So you see, trace squared A, trace squared A turns out to be uh, trace squared A is turns out to be A plus D the whole squared. All right. If I write A as uh, if I write A in this form, A is equal to A B C D. All right. If I write it like this, okay, then trace squared A is A plus D the whole squared. All right, and this is also equal to trace squared of B A B inverse because you see the trace is not going to be uh, changed if you conjugate okay and trace of B A B inverse see B A B inverse the matrix representative for this is uh, so, so let me write it uh, let me put a small uh, box here and say A is uh, A is just uh, A B C D uh, with uh, A comma B comma C comma D belonging to R and A D minus B C equal to 1 okay and uh, uh, B A B inverse is identified with uh, uh, Z going to lambda Z okay. The matrix for that uh, matrix representative in, representative in SL2 is root lambda 0 0 1 by root lambda this is the matrix representative okay. Uh, it, it is actually la if you just blindly write it as a matrix uh, an invertible uh, an invertible matrix it will be lambda 0 0 1 all right but uh, the determinant of that is lambda but we want determinant 1 all right so one important thing to remember is that before we did uh, uh, be before we calculate the trace squared you normalize it to this uh, uh, you normalize to the condition that the determinant is equal to 1 okay otherwise this definition cannot be applied okay this definition assumes that you have assumed A D minus B C equal to 1 alright. So, uh, you see B A B inverse will be this and well I will get this is equal to I will get this is equal to root lambda plus 1 by root lambda the whole squared which is uh, lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 okay. Now notice that uh, the condition is trace squared trace squared A is uh, a does not is, is not a real number lying between 0 and 4 that is a condition for A to be loxodromic alright. 
but notice a and d are real numbers therefore a plus d the whole squared is a non negative real number all right and uh, it cannot be zero because a plus d whole squared uh, uh, well it probably uh, well well in fact if it is zero it's elliptic all right but uh, uh, i mean it it's not supposed to be uh, uh, zero any any real number between 0 and 4 okay now if you remember uh, i told you that uh, see the uh, from this i want you to conclude that uh, lambda has to be real and lambda has to be positive okay i claim that lambda has to be real and lambda has to be positive all right and uh, then uh, it is clear that if lambda is real and lambda is positive then it is clear that it is hyperbolic by the by this condition here okay if lambda is real and lambda is positive then it is hyperbolic. So, I want to say that lambda is uh, uh, lambda is actually real okay and I think uh, that is uh, probably quite obvious um, so we have we have already seen this uh, last time. Uh, you know uh, a plus d the whole squared is uh, the condition that the a plus d the whole squared is real already means that either lambda is real or mod lambda is 1 okay that we got that condition by saying that lamb a plus d the whole squared is real if and only if lambda plus 1 by lambda is real okay then we and lambda plus 1 by lambda is real if and only if you can equate it to lambda bar plus 1 by lambda bar and then if you collect it out collect the terms out and it will then it will tell you that either lambda is real or mod lambda is 1 okay. But if mod lambda is 1 it is elliptic but you have assumed it is loxodromic so mod lambda is not 1 so lambda has to be real okay. So, so let me write that down uh, let me write that down here. So, uh, a plus d the whole squared is real if and only if uh, implies uh, implies you know lambda is real or mod lambda is equal to 1 okay, but mod lambda equal to 1 implies a is elliptic okay, but the which is which is not true I have assumed a is loxodromic all right. So, uh, uh, so lambda has to be real okay, so lambda has to be a real number uh, it is a it is a real number and uh, uh, lambda cannot be 0 or 1 or minus 1 okay. Now, you see we, we uh, that is uh, that's another thing there is another remark that I made last time that you know this number I mean this function lambda for lambda real lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 that is always greater than 4 if lambda is positive okay and it is always less than 0 if lambda is negative and provided you exclude 1 and minus 1 okay. So, lambda plus 1 by lambda uh, plus 2 is greater than 4 if lambda positive and lambda plus 1 by lambda uh, plus 2 is less than 0 if lambda is negative okay excluding the cases uh, lambda equal to plus 1 and lambda equal to minus 1 all right. And well uh, what I have here is that lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 you see on the one hand this is uh, uh, this is greater than or equal to 0 okay this is greater than or equal to 0 because uh, you know a plus d a and d are real numbers a plus d is whole square is square of a real number so it is greater than or equal to 0. So, the only possibility is that lambda is positive. So, you see uh, so lambda is has to be positive okay since a and d are real okay. So, lambda is positive and uh, uh, you know lambda is real and lambda is positive. So, by by this uh, uh, characterization a has to be hyperbolic okay. So, this implies a is hyperbolic okay. So, that finishes off the proof of the first claim all right. So, there is no difference between hyperbolic and loxotromic for automorphisms of the upper half plane right. So, in other words there is no non hyperbolic loxotromic automorphism of the upper half plane right. Then the second one, so the second statement is uh, a is elliptic if and only if a fixes a point of view okay. So, suppose a suppose a is elliptic 
suppose A is elliptic all right. Then um, uh, I claim that uh, you know first of all I claim that uh, C is not 0 okay then C is not equal to 0 okay uh, and why is this true uh, because you see uh, so I will have to say uh, just, uh, just a moment's thought. So you see for if C is 0 okay then A D equal to 1 alright and you see uh, A plus uh, A minus D the whole square is A plus D the whole square minus 4 A D minus 4 A D okay and this is going to be uh, well um, uh, what is a plus d the whole square uh, so that a plus d the whole square is a trace square okay and I have assumed that trace square is uh, going to be greater than or equal to 0 and strictly less than 4 I, that is that is the condition for it to be elliptic okay. So, uh, so you see a plus d the whole square is a real number which is greater than or equal to 0 and strictly less than 4 this is the condition for electricity. So, this will tell you that uh, a minus d the whole square is negative because you see a plus d the whole square is strictly less than 4 so it will be 4 minus 4 a d but you see a d is 1 so it is 4 minus 4 it is 0 so it will be strictly less than 0 which is impossible which is uh, which is absurd well, it is absurd because a and d are real numbers and I am getting a square of a real number as negative okay. So c cannot be 0 alright now if c is not 0 since c is not 0 the solution uh, to fixed points of A uh, namely uh, A z plus B by C z plus D equal to z is the cot is uh, uh, the solutions are solutions to quadratic to the quadratic Uh, C Z squared plus uh, D minus A times uh, Z minus B equal to 0 alright. Now, e, this is a honest quadratic because C is non 0 alright, but again you see D minus uh, but you see uh, uh, A minus D uh, but the discriminant the discriminant is you see a, mi a minus d the whole square minus 4 into c into minus b which is uh, you know it is uh, a minus d the whole square minus plus 4 bc but you see uh, ad minus ad minus bc is equal to 1 all right so i can i can use that so i'll get a minus d the whole square plus 4 into this is uh, um, uh, ad minus 1 all right so uh, so and this is going to be a plus d the whole square uh, minus 4 okay but you see a plus d the whole square minus 4 is negative because it is elliptic a plus d the whole square minus 4 is negative. So what is happening uh, the, uh, the fixed points turn out to be the roots of a real quadratic equation with negative discriminant therefore you have imaginary roots and you know the two imaginary roots are conjugates one of them has to lie in the upper half plane the other one is going to lie in the lower half plane namely it is conjugate therefore you get a fixed point which belongs to you okay. So this implies uh, A has a fixed point in U okay and its conjugate will be the fixed point in the lower half plane alright and those two fixed points will be roots of this quadratic equation real quadratic equation with imaginary uh, with uh, negative discriminant right. So we have proved that a, if A is elliptic then it fixes a point of view conversely suppose A, a is such that A fixes a point of view we will prove that it is elliptic okay. So let us go to that so let me rub off this side conversely conversely assume that uh, 
A fixes a point of view. Say A of z naught equal to z naught uh, uh, real part of z naught positive. So z naught is a point of view and A fixes z naught. Okay. Now you see, so you know th what this means is uh, it means A is z naught plus B uh, plus B by C z naught plus D is equal to z naught. All right. Now you know if I take conjugates on both sides and remember that uh, A B C D are now real, I will get that z naught bar is also a fixed point. Okay. So this will imply that A z naught bar plus B by C z naught bar plus D is also equal to z naught bar. Just simply take conjugates on both sides. Okay. So what this will tell you is it will tell you that z naught and z naught bar are fixed points of A. Okay. Z naught and z naught bar are fixed points of A. All right. And uh, uh, so you have two uh, fixed points. One being the conjugate of the other, okay. So uh, from this, you should conclude. I conclude that uh, you know uh, these are solutions. These are two solutions to the equation a z plus b by c z plus d equal to z. Okay, that is two solutions to a z plus b by c z plus d is equal to z. Okay, so this should force <coughs> that, uh, and mind you, if I rewrite this as a quadratic in equation in z, it's a quadratic with real coefficients, and uh, now you have two solutions which are conjugates of one another, and that will happen if and only if the discriminant is negative, and uh, that condition will tell me that uh, uh, zero uh, uh, is less than or equal to a plus d. The whole square is strictly less than four. So this will imply that uh, A is elliptic. Okay. So essentially, uh, the only principle that you are using is that if you have a uh, quadratic equation with real coefficients, then uh, it will have imaginary roots and they are conjugates of one another. If and only if the discriminant is negative, nothing more than that. Right. Then uh, let's so uh, let's try to prove the third statement. Uh, A is of finite order if and only if A is uh, so. So I'll have to prove. I have to assume A is finite order. And I'll have to prove is A is elliptic, all right? So let me do that. Uh, proof of uh, three. Uh, a A is a finite order. Order means a power m. Okay, you apply the transformation Mobius transformation a m times, then you get the identity. Identity transformation, okay, where m is a positive integer. Okay, this is what a is a finite order. Then you see b a b inverse power m is also going to be uh, b. It is going to be a b a power m b inverse. Okay, if you write it out, all right, and this is going to uh, be a, a power m b inverse, and this is going to be just identity. Okay, so what this will tell you, uh, but on the other hand, uh, b a b inverse is supposed to be the map. Uh, b a b inverse is supposed to be the map uh, that takes z to lambda z. Okay, so b a b inverse whole power m is going to be the map that takes z to lambda power m z. Okay, because it is composition, right? And so this is the same as z going to z, which is identity map. So this will tell you that lambda is a root of unity. So it will tell you that lambda power m is one, okay? And this will tell you that mod lambda is one. And of course, mod lambda is one is the condition for a to be elliptic. So this implies a is elliptic. Okay. So that finishes the proof of this lemma. Now the uh, so uh, there are some uh, uh, so so up, up to whatever we learn from these lemma, 
we can uh, deduce uh, a couple of facts about the uh, deck transformation group which is the same as the fundamental group of the Riemann surface okay. So, <coughs> let me write those facts down. So, <coughs> uh, uh, so I will say so this is an theorem okay uh, let x be a Riemann surface let x be a Riemann surface uh, then uh, uh, its fundamental group group uh, phi 1 x comma x uh, x belonging to x. So, if you you fix a base point small x in capital X and take the fundamental group then the fundamental group <coughs> number 1 uh, has no torsion. Okay, which is the same as saying that it is torsion free is torsion free and uh, by that I mean it has no elements of finite order okay. that is has no elements of finite order. Okay. Number 2 <coughs> Uh, has only parabolic and hyperbolic elements. In other words, it cannot have elliptic elements, it cannot have uh, non hyperbolic loxodromic elements, ok, cannot have have elliptic or non hyperbolic loxodromic elements ok. So, you are able to get this information about the elements in the fundamental group of the Riemann surface and what is the proof? The proof is you see we uh, take a universe universal cover for the Riemann surface. So, uh, x sub x sub univ uh, p x universal cover and uh, because of this universal cover what happens is that you have identification of the fundamental group at the of the base with the deck transformation group of the cover. Which is a subgroup of the holomorphic automorphisms of the universal cover ok. Now, uh, so let me write that neatly ok. Now, what are the uh, uh, let us exhaust the three possible cases for the universal cover uh, for the universal covering space and then uh, both statements claimed the theorem will be uh, uh, easy. Uh, so, if x universal is p 1 which is the same as uh, C union infinity the Riemann sphere ok. Then uh, you know uh, the the uh, the deck transformation the you see then the fundamental group of x has to be trivial ok then phi 1 of x uh, comma x is trivial. So, there is nothing to uh, there is nothing to prove ok uh, and it is uh, and you know why it is trivial that is because uh, um, it is anyway going to con consist of Mobius transformations and Mobius transformations uh, uh, you know a Mobius transformation uh, will have uh, at least one fixed point or it will have uh, two fixed points in C union in infinity all right, but deck transformations are not supposed to have any fixed points ok, deck transformations are not supposed to have any fixed points. Therefore, the only possibility is that uh, it has uh, the, the deck transformation group contains only the identity element and that means that the fundamental group is just a trivial group okay. So, the, the other case is uh, if x sub univ is uh, the complex plane ok 
if x sub u is the complex plane we have already seen that pi 1 uh, is abelian okay, uh, pi 1 uh, we have seen seen pi 1 of x comma x is either 0 uh, or uh, is isomorphic to 0 or z or z direction z okay, these are the only 3 cases okay and uh, these 3 cases correspond to uh, uh, x isomorphic to c here x is isomorphic to c star okay and this corresponds to x isomorphic to a complex torus these are the 3 cases and if you go back to the proof uh, of this uh, of this result uh, what we did was we identified the the deck transformation group as just translations okay by uh, making a suitable uh, conjugation if necessary okay we identified the deck transformation group as translations and then you know that translations are, are all parabolic okay so in this case the fundamental group is either trivial or it can contain only parabolic elements so in this case it is translation by a single uh, non zero complex vector and in this case it is translations by uh, in this case it is translations by integer multiples of a single non zero complex vector and in this case it is translations by uh, uh, integer linear combinations of two non zero complex uh, numbers uh, whose uh, ratio is non real okay so uh, in this case you are going to get only parabolic elements in the fundamental group all right so the only other case is the universal covering is actually the upper half plane okay now you see if the universal covering is the upper half plane okay uh, notice that uh, so the first thing uh, i want to say is that uh, you see uh, a deck transformation cannot have fixed points okay and we have seen that uh, a uh, mobius transformation that leaves the upper half plane invariant is elliptic if and only if, if it fixes a point of view okay and since a deck transformation is not allowed to have fixed points uh, the elements cannot be uh, elliptic okay and then so therefore uh, the only possibility is either uh, parabolic or hyperbolic and mind you hyperbolic is the same as loxodromic if you are working if, if you are considering automorphisms of u so in this case okay the only thing or the only deck transformations you will get are going to be either parabolic or hyperbolic okay by the, by the previous lemma by the preceding lemma pi 1 of x comma x can contain uh, or rather uh, let me okay uh, let me rather write it as deck which is isomorphic to pi 1 deck can contain only parabolic or hyperbolic elements so the point that i am using here is that uh, a deck transformation cannot have a fixed point because if you remember what was the reason if a deck by that i mean a non trivial deck transformation if a, if a deck transformation has a fixed point then it is agreeing with the identity transformation of the universal covering space at that point but then both of them are lifts of the covering projection okay and uniqueness of lifting will tell you that it has to be the identity okay so a deck transformation cannot have even a single fixed point that is what I am using okay since a deck transformation cannot have a fixed point okay so uh, this is the information you are able to get about the uh, uh, the fundamental group of riemann surface and so what is very interesting is that you see uh, your uh, the the fundamental group was defined in a very abstract way but trying to get abstract properties of the group okay uh, one is able to do that uh, by studying uh, Mobius transformations because these are finally only some among these are going to be 
members of the deck transformation group which is identified as the fundamental group okay. So that finishes the proof of this lemma all right now um, yeah so uh, I should also remark the following thing so you see uh, uh, I have literally proved both of these statements the only thing is I will have to make a remark uh, suppose there is an element in the deck transformation group which is a finite order okay then uh, it cannot be this case okay it cannot be this case because here the groups uh, are z and z directs from z no element is a finite order all right whereas uh, so it has to be only in this case and in this case an element of finite order is elliptic that is what we have proved okay but elliptic uh, if, but if it is elliptic then it has to fix a point of uh, u okay but a deck transformation is not supposed to fix any point therefore it is not allowed therefore you can see that uh, uh, in all the cases you cannot have uh, a deck transformation which is a finite order. So that means the fundamental group of a Riemann surface is torsion free okay that is a non trivial statement that comes out of this study right okay. So, so let me stop here.